Hey everybody, it's Rob here with my co-host Cam Davis for our High Five Moment. We are totally excited to have with us a very new face to our Fort Wayne community, Jerry Purdy. Jerry is the Executive Director at Global Leadership Summit, known by us as GLS and beyond. She leads the uh, GLS Fort Wayne and Citywide Prayer Movement while working to expand these uh, groups and these movements across Northeastern Indiana. And I tell you what, I've had uh, the privilege of being able to work with her on a few occasions already. And I just wanna say, Jerry, it's so good to have you. Thank you for taking time with us today. Oh, well, thank you for the invite. You guys are uh, meeting a lot of amazing leaders in the community and I'm just humbled to be on today. So thank you so much. Well, we appreciate it. I'm gonna turn uh, the first question over to Brother Cam. We're gonna go through five questions and he's got the first one. Jerry, thanks for hanging out with us today. My first question that I have for you today is, how do you come home from a long day we won't talk about any water boats or water activity. <laughs> but how do you just stress after a long day? Yeah, I mean, I think it looks different right now during the season where I'm actually working from home. We have four little girls that range from ages 11 to 5. So home life is pretty busy for us. Um, and, you know, I try to get as much done in the workday as possible. So um, I'm not a water cooler talker when I am in the office. Usually my door is shut and I'm trying to hammer it out because when I come home, I just want to be present with those girls and I want to be present with my husband. Uh, a few years ago, we made the decision that um, when we come home for dinner time, um, we unplug unless obviously there's a work emergency, right? So phones are put away, um, they're put to a different section of the house and we are just really intentional with our kids um, because you only get them for such a short period of time. And so it's been one of those things where we do dinner as a family every single night. That's super important to us when it's nice outside. Um, we try to get outside, get active, play basketball, walk. Um, but I really just think it's being present and being with the people that have been entrusted to you because that's the biggest blessing that you have and the biggest impact that you can make in the world is, is raising your family and um, doing it well. I mean, we don't get it right all the time, but we try. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, a, that's great. Thank you so much, Jerry. Cam, I told you, stay away from the water stuff, man. I don't want to get avoiding it. I said <laughs> avoiding this yeah, topic. Yeah. Well, <laughs> usually it's yeah. on a boat, but since ours <laughs> has been broke four times, and this is what they're alluding to, and I literally had to swim it in with my husband yesterday. Um, that's that's not uh, a sense of joy right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Okay. Well, all right. Hey, that's wonderful. Okay, so next question. <laughs> um, Jerry, I've, I've had uh, the privilege of, of getting a, a small glimpse of your heart. And, uh, you know, we, we wanted uh, you on high five in order for the, your new community to be able to get a glimpse of that heart as well. So with that being said, I was wondering if you could kind of help identify um, which particular names uh, would you attribute influencing the molding of who you are today? Ooh, that's a, that's a deep one. <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you that I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for amazing adults that invested in me. Um, Youth for Christ was a part of my story wow. growing up. Um, and my in-laws are some of those adults, um, Gary and Rosie Purdy, that helped um, start YFC in Wabash County and just were amazing wow. influencers for me. Um, they loved really, really well, even when it was hard sometimes with me as a child and a teenager, we, that would be a whole other high five that we could get into. <laughs> um, but I, I know that they're, they're two that are the closest. Um, and then the last couple of years, Larry Lance. So Larry Lance is, is my executive coach, um, counselor and mentor, and he served in that role for the last um, two years. I just love that man's heart and what he has done for this community in Northeast Indiana um, to make YFC the name that it is, right? The third largest chapter yeah. in the United States. And then really helping with Chris, um, onboarding him in that new role. Um, I just, 
I just love that organization. It's a big part of my story. But I can say professionally, um, Craig Snow, who is in Kosciuszko County at Sylvia's Insurance Group, I never considered myself a leader ever mm -hmm. until about four years ago when he asked me to lead this thing called the Global Leadership Summit um, in Warsaw, Indiana. Um, and we started because of the GLS in Fort Wayne. And uh, I said, I don't know, do you think I'm ready to do that? And he said, God has big plans for you. You're a leader, mm -hmm. you need to let, lean into that. Um, and he was the first person that ever really kind of called that out in me. And so he's been one of my mentors for the past couple of years as well, um, and an amazing boss. And I'm just so mm -hmm. thankful for the people, big and small, right? Whether you're a CEO or you're one of my friend's moms, you've been able to pour into my life um, and help because it takes a village when you have four kids. It takes a village when you have one kid, right? So um, it's it's just been a lot of people. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely. It's never, it's never just one, is it? No. Yeah. It's not. It's not. And, you know, there's different people for different seasons, too, right? God calls the people that you need in that season of life, whether it's being yes. a new mom or reentering the workforce like I was doing four years ago. Um, you just he places the right people in the right moments just to get you to where he needs you to be. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Great. Now, Jerry, you talked about having a village. You talked about having just mentors and really having people pour into you. So my question I have for you is, um, you're executive director for GLS. And so obviously you have to have some type of, um, I guess I'm gonna say books or podcasts or any other external resources. And you mentioned that you have a large family, all girls, so Godspeed. So um, and who knows if you had the time and I, hopefully I'm not talking too much, but hopefully if you had the time, if you don't have the time, what books or what podcasts or, or what TED talks or whatever external resources are on your radar that, that really helps you to kind of plug in and take those, I have to call them little nuggets, take those nuggets and run with them. Absolutely. Well, I love reading and I love reading physical books. Like I'm not a tablet reader. Um, so uh, if you've ever watched the Bill Gates documentary where he carries around that bag of books, my husband jokes that that's me. <laughs> I try to read at least 12 to 15 books a year. Um, and some of the great ones that I've read this year, uh, the first book of the year was You're the Girl for the Job by Jess Conley, Believing the God Who Called You incredible book for any woman, whether, you know, you are 16 or you're 60 plus, it's, it's a great book. Um, I just read Patrick Lencioni's Death by Meeting, um, having an effective meeting, especially in these days, right? When we're all on Zoom and on these platforms, how do we have an engaging meeting? How do we really get things done and move it forward? Um, obviously, I love the Craig Groeschel podcast amazing new podcast that comes out every Thursday on a leadership concept. It's 20 minutes and it's quick. Um, I love Jen Hatmaker. Her new book is out this year and uh, that's one of the books I've already read. Uh, her podcast is incredible, um, whether it's, you know, inspiration or just having a really good laugh. Um, and I think that that's what we need right now, right? We need to find things that aren't always just so heavy, but can provide levity to our lives because we need to laugh and we need to have find joy and um, see the joy in our life. So yeah, I'm a big reader. Um, podcasts, I get it on my drive to Fort Wayne or my drive back. So <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> That's awesome, Jerry. Thank you. Um, being that you've been in a executive director role before, so this you're not a stranger to the role. Um, how have you kept your organization um, inspired during these really uncertain times, inspired and focused on what matters in these uncertain times? Well, I think I really have an amazing job where I, it doesn't take a ton of like, mm. oh, let's do this. Everybody that I work with is just so passionate about the community. They're so passionate about the organization and building leaders um, and really just loving people well. And when you have that already built into your culture um, and you have those types of leaders that um, are just incredible, right? I'm learning from them more than I think that I'm teaching them. So um, 
really, I, I just try to lean into what they do well, figure out what they do well, figure out what their spark and their passion is, and then just fuel it as much as possible and try to make those mm -hmm. connections. If you watched GLS a few years ago, uh, Danny Meyer, who is the owner of Gramercy and New York City was one of my favorite speakers. And his talk really resonated with me. And it was ABCD, always be collecting dots. And I think that that's what our job is as leaders, right? Our job is to be great listeners, is to connect those dots. And then when we connect those dots and, and take, you know, what this person's passionate about and connect them with an organization, that provides the passion and the fuel that you could never do with a speech or an email or, you know, a letter. It's just really getting to the heart of what drives them. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jerry. Awesome. Well, um, I'm sad because this is question five, so it means our time is wow. already. <laughs> I know, already. Time flies when you're having fun. And so I, I normally ask a, a very pointed question, um, but I'm going to stick within that track, but kind of deviate a little bit. So I love your list of books you said that you read. You said you read 12 to 15 books a year, which is incredible. That's about 12 more than more than what I normally do. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. But out of those authors that you listed, and you don't, if you, if you mentioned them, great. If you didn't mention, that's okay. Um, who would you love to sit down and break bread with? Ooh, that is such a hard question. Um, well, one that I didn't mention that was an early book in this year is The Disruptive Gospel, and it's by Mac Peer. And it is about looking at how we engage with our community and our city um, and those around us, our neighbors, um, to really just fuel the gospel and to love them and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I would absolutely say him um, because I just love the community. Um, I really feel like God has put me in the position for a reason. Although some days I'm like, I don't know God, but I'm just going to continue to say yes. And I think that that's what Mac and his wife have done for the last 30 years in New York City. And his story is incredible. And I would just love to learn from him um, and just see how he ignites his passion day after day and year after year. Awesome. That is incredible. Well, Jerry, <laughs> it has been fantastic hanging out with you this afternoon. I oh, really my goodness. Well, thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed <laughs> your brain. Um, now I know that if I need to get my fix, hopefully one day when the boat is fixed, I will commute out there to your to <laughs> area. That's right. You know I'm not very handy, but I hear the phrase, many hands make light work. So if you get me on a good day, I might, I might be willing. Well, to but maybe extra legs make a better swimmer of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, this would not be high five if we didn't actually high five, friends. So I'm going to do a countdown. That's for you, Rob. And here we go. <laughs> so in three, two, one, high five. High five. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks.